Welcome indeed everyone to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And here I am finding somewhere new to walk today um, along this path. Now, um, today what I want to talk about, the episode is called No One Is In Control. And the reason why it's called No One Is In Control is because the only um, people I've ever heard say that were Alan Moore and Terence McKenna. Two people who I consider to be more heavyweight and in a lot of ways wiser and more intelligent than a lot of people out there. Now what does that mean? It means that while a lot of people and I have found since making these videos has dragged me back to social media where my, um, <laughs> my uh, Facebook friends keep going on about conspiracies all the time, right? Well, I do find myself in disagreement with a lot of people. Not because I think that um, there's anything, that the, 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 the system is any better, or not that I believe in the mainstream narrative, absolutely not. On the, the flipping contrary, so to speak. But I am more of the opinion that no one is controlling this. Now, if no one is controlling this, in a lot of ways it's better. In a lot of ways it's worse. But it does mean that self-determination is more possible and less in jeopardy if no one is in control. Does it not? It means that the pieces are in the air at the moment in a time of real uncertainty as we are facing at the moment. Real uncertainty. The pieces are all in the air. And those who think laterally, those who are quick off the mark, to work out how to surf this, how to navigate their way through this, could actually come out the other end um, with a sense of self-determination and could come out the other end all right. I think there are a lot of opportunities available at the moment for those um, who think differently and we just gotta work out what the hell they are. So if no one is in control, right, then what do we do? We can all find a way to contribute to this time, right? And I am of the opinion, yes, I know that a lot of people are gonna be screwed through this time right now, right? And yes, people are getting paranoid about Bill Gates. I actually am not as paranoid about Bill Gates as most people are. I kind of think that he's some kind of phantom and that people are overestimating him, you know? overestimating him, giving him more power than he actually fucking has or actually fucking deserves to have. And that in actual fact, he's not the threat, the menace, right? That people are making him out to be. And um, now people might say, oh yeah, but you're in, you're in denial and <laughs> You see what I've done there? And I'd say to them, well, I actually don't know. It's just that you look through history, right? No one really knows and no one can really tell what the hell is going to happen in the future. No one saw Hitler coming, did they, really? No one saw the Holocaust coming. No one saw um, world, the world wars coming before they actually came. There may have been a few people out there, like, you know, that were concerned about the future. And um, I think maybe after World War I, Winston Churchill may have been concerned that things had not um, been resolved and a lot of people weren't actually listening to him because they didn't think that, um, that the world was really in jeopardy. We went into a hedonistic 1920s, of course. Well, it was only really the posh that went into a hedonistic 1920s. Um, a lot of, you know, the people at the bottom didn't really have the luxury. It wasn't really until the 1960s that the, the 1920s for the common people was possible. You see what I mean, All right? The future is a bit of a weird one because we don't actually know what's going to happen in the future, right? And we don't know who the winners and the losers are going to be. And it's very easy for us to say, right, oh, these people are in collusion with those people. Um, Silicon Valley want to do this and, you know, um, Brian Rose is part of this group and that, um, you know, and that so-and-so is a shill and all that. We... We don't really know. This is all wild speculation on our part, right? So if you think that no one is in control, 
and we're sailing on a rudderless ship with no captain, no one at the helm, no one at steering it, and fuck knows what the hell is going on. But if you have that narrative, rather than the conspiracist narrative inside your head, that, wouldn't you say, gives you the power of self-determination. It means that there is something that you could possibly do in all of this. If no one is in control, right, do you really think that we're going to end up in this um, nightmare, dystopia situation? I mean, all right, we are to some degree ending up in a, a really strange dystopian situation and it does look like it's getting worse in a lot of ways. But I still think that there are a lot of interesting opportunities to be had, right? And uh, so I really honestly wouldn't worry um, too much about a lot of stuff. I mean, all right, yeah, the future could be bad, it could be sinister, we could be losing a lot of freedoms, right? We could be in this situation where the internet is the ultimate trap and the ultimate prison because it keeps everyone on the inside and then all the wrong thinkers are going to be turned into pariahs and are going to be banned and this problem could actually get worse and worse and worse over time. Well, I don't know about that because I'm also thinking that there are some pretty interesting wrong thinkers that I really like out there, you know? And um, I think that a lot of these wrong thinkers are actually going to be very influential over time and um, it would be worth being on the outside with them as they become part of some new parallel society, some new deep web or something like that. And um, so I kind of think that there will always be some alternative that will form. There will always be some parallel version of it that will form. And um, you never know. It could be interesting to see what will happen in the future. Right? But one thing that I am trying to encourage as many people to do as, as possible is to be, you know, at least try to be positive. Try to be positive and hopeful and optimistic because it can't all be doom and gloom, can it, man? There's too much pessimism. Self-determination means that you will determine yourself a very negative outcome and a very negative scenario if you create that for yourself right it's your responsibility be careful what you wish for be careful what you create because you'll probably end up getting it right and this is why i say um to everyone be in control of your own thing right now the reason why i'm saying this is because one of the things that i learned through having a look at the whole brian rose shenanigans is that he's no different from anyone that you get at any time they pop up during times of economic uncertainty right now what times of economic uncertainty have i lived through and even if i didn't live through them what times of economic uncertainty have i seen in recent history well it just so turns out right the 1980s although there was 1980s excess right you think that there were the yuppies and you think it was quite a slick decade right well, it just so turned out that it was the immediate aftermath of one of the worst times financially in history in, um, you know, uh, in, in the Western world, especially like in Britain and probably likewise in America too, right? The 60s seemed quite prosperous, but then the money ran out. The false economy came to an end. The game of musical chairs stopped and they realised there were too few chairs. Right? The 1970s came along, and the 1970s, no one had any money. Everyone was pretty much bankrupt. Um, Britain was quite fucked, because Britain was very socialist. The unions strangled the economy of Britain. I don't know why America was fucked. Probably because they spent all their money on the uh, Vietnam War. I had no idea, but it just so it seem, you look back, everyone was scruffy in the 70s. No one had any money back then. don't know what the hell went and cause that to happen really but by the time the 1980s came along what you noticed was that although the wealth was coming back everyone was looking slicker new buildings were going up new styles were coming in and everything looked slicker and more yuppified and technology was booming computers and the digital revolution were beginning to take off and all of that and you can see this clear difference between the way things looked in the 70s and the 80s and I remember 
the 70s and the 80s. I mean, I was only a kid in the 70s. I was a teenager in the 80s. And I was an adult, a young adult, at the end of the 80s. So I remember quite very clearly and very vividly what happened. Because you had a lot of homelessness and unemployment, but at the same time you had these emerging industries coming along, you had dodgy fuckers, like Brian Rose. Dodgy fuckers. Chancers out there trying to take your money by offering you get-rich-quick schemes. There was multi-level marketing schemes in the 1980s, right? It was just before the internet, really. It was a whole decade before the internet began to take off. But you had multi-level marketing schemes and they were ripping people off left, right and centre. Screwing people out of their money, right? Then, the next thing you had after the multi-level marketing, of course, um, was when the um, 1990s come along, it was a bit of a difficult one because you had, again, despite the economy was trying to get up, right, um, there was a bit of a crash. I think 1987 there was a crash. And it took a good 10 years for the economy to get back to normal again, right? Now, I remember back in the day, and so I, as a result, I see this situation as being, right, this is the biggest crash since the 1970s. And those types are coming out of the woodwork now, and they've been around for a long time, waiting for opportunities like this to happen. And that's why I see Brian Rose as being. He's one of those types of people. If you went back to the 1950s, after the Second World War, there was a black market, um, you know, and um, as a result of rationing being around at the time, of course, um, you had these characters called Spivs in London. Um, they would wear these, uh, they would wear these stripy suits, pinstripe suits with big, thick stripes on them, uh, pencil moustaches trilby hats and they would be selling black market goods the laws against them selling this stuff were pretty much unenforceable at a time um, when everyone had just come out of a war and people were on rationing and carried on being on rationing throughout the rest of the 1940s right away up until the early 1950s there was still fucking rationing going on you think about that man the spivs were out selling things the black market goods they could get their hands on they were dodgy uh, unscrupulous fuckers but they served a purpose, you know? That's the thing, they served a, uh, some kind of purpose because, you know, they were bringing things that couldn't be brought any other way. But had there have been a different time, had it been the 1980s, they would have been into multi-level marketing. Had it been the 1920s and 1930s in a, um, Chicago or somewhere like that, they would have been part of that whole fucking speakeasy culture. And had it been now, <laughs> you know, they'd be on the internet, making themselves out to be the little guy who's part of the alternative movements, right? While selling you dodgy courses and not delivering on them. So when you think about it like that, right? And then when you think about something else, another thing to think about is the fact that the mainstream media are now losing their power, losing their reputation, losing their prestige, right? And um, we're getting all sorts of things like on the internet because of uh, the fact that we have a dying mainstream right um, desperate to hold together a certain narrative that they actually can't fucking hold when you think about it they're not doing a very good job of holding this narrative and out of desperation they're saying oh fake news this and we've got to stop the people who are bringing us fake news while delivering us their fake news, it's quite laughable, really, isn't it? It's absolutely bloody laughable that we've got Silicon Valley becoming censorious in the way that they are becoming censorious because they're desperate to keep the mainstream narrative going. And so they're now acting as judge, jury, and executioner and trying to stop them, you call it, conspiracy theorists and what have you from forming. And as a result, we then have this other problem, because we have these other platforms coming up now, um, like BitChute, like Mines, and like all these others, right? But the problem is, who's on them? Radical fringe lunatics. Now, on one hand, we've got people desperate to cling on to the mainstream narrative. On the other hand, we've got radical fringe lunatics. Then we've got 
dodgy, fucking, unscrupulous, greedy chancer, rip-off merchants, right? We've got it all going on at the moment, haven't we? And I'm thinking to myself, well, where do I fit into this? I'm trying to be an honest person. I'm trying to tell, um, how can I say the truth as I see it, the best I can. I'm just trying to share my observations. I have no other agenda except to act as some kind of, um, I don't know, balancer in this. I'm trying to unbalance the mainstream. I'm trying to balance the alternative. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say, like, well, if you're a weirdo like me, if you're someone who has never been able to fit in and you have only ever had your own wits to go by because um, and your own authority, then really, in this time, you want to make this world a better place, it's your responsibility. It's our responsibility. We're going to make this world. We're going to create the future. They ain't going to fucking do it. And if you suggest that there's this elite of people out there that are going to determine the future, you're going to create that reality. All right, they may try to control, they may try to enslave, they may try to do all sorts of things. But in your daily life, as in my daily life, we're just going to get on with our lives and enjoy ourselves to the best ability and create to the best of our ability and try to live to the best of our ability as much as we possibly can in this world, right? Then it's up to us to be responsible for that future. You know? So it means we have to grow up. We have to be sensible in what we're doing. We really do. We can't be fringe lunatics if, you know, if the mainstream is letting us down and we want to be different from the mainstream, or I'm different from the mainstream, you know what I mean, then we can't be fringe lunatics. We can't allow fringe lunatics to hijack our narrative. We can't just go around being these hapless victims and say, oh, no one's listening to me, no one's listening to my needs, and then a bunch of cunts come along, unscrupulous rip-off merchants, unscrupulous extreme left or right wing people come along and, and say, oh, we'll listen to you. Um, we'll help you, we'll do this for you, we'll do that for you. Fuck them all. Let's do it for ourselves. Let's say no, fuck it. I'm determining my own reality and I am not going to you know, outsource this to anyone. No one is in control. And if no one is in control, that puts you in a driving seat, doesn't it? So, get off your ass, start steering that fucking steering wheel and find a direction. That's what I intend to do. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this channel. I'm not waiting for anyone else. I'm not outsourcing right, uh, my reality to anyone else. No. Of course, I'm trying to reach people. I'm trying to be an influencer of sorts. But I don't really want to determine what anyone else gets up to. I'm just trying to say, you know, work it out for yourself. I'll work it out for myself. And... We just be the best that we can possibly be in all of this. And we, we be exemplars. And we basically try to raise the bar and set a level of excellence. And we live by that. We believe in ourselves and we be confident. And we get on it and we do it. What we need to do. The idea of no one being in control ain't so scary after all, is it, eh? Right. Been a long one, this. So, better go. Better go home. See you later, alligator. See you soon, a baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Also, join the Facebook group, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe on BitChute. It's early days for us yet, so please help this channel grow, and it will be gratefully appreciated if you do.